All right. Sometimes in Christian circles, we we use what's called Christianese. Okay, this is this is where I don't know who who coined that phrase, but it's basically where we where we say things in a way that only Christians who have been saved a very long time and who grew up in church understand, like the Lord touching you, or for someone who doesn't grow up in the church and comes from a very sexual background, what is that going to mean to them? See what I mean? It makes it sound like maybe there's things happening in church service that they don't actually happen in a church service. Um, a lot of people don't understand the idea of a relationship with God, where it's not just something that you go and, and do your ser do your dues in a service. We can't just expect for people to just know these things. We have to explain things. Um, and so that's what this lesson is about, seeking God. How, what does that mean? How do we seek God? Um, first off, a seeking God is living for him. Okay, We, we seek God by living for him, doing a living a lifestyle that's pleasing to him. We seek God by worshiping. Um, this we do sometimes. Worship is, is a prayer, yes, um, as Robert Weber once noted. Um, it is also uh, it's also music. It's also a lifestyle. It's 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 where we're doing something from our numerous for being for for the sake of God. It's not so much something that we're dragging our feet to do. We're doing it in worship to someone. Um, prayer and fasting is a way to seek after God. Um, fasting helps clear your mind. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, prayer is communing with the Lord. Um, it's studying his word. Okay, studying his word. Um, it is revolving with his word as the Bible. Say so once again, things that we don't even realize what we're saying that, that, that is confusing to people. You know, we say things like his word, for instance, like I just said, not realizing that some people don't understand what that is. The word is the Bible. So, um, and there are different uh, Bibles. There's the Christian Bible. There's there's um, um, uh, there's the Mormon Bible. You see, I mean, there's there's different views. Sorry, I got a text from my wife, and I was trying to think what, I, what she was saying. Uh, revol um, revolving your thoughts, actions, um, and attitudes around Him, around God. This is this is seeking God. Making your thoughts um, be be good thoughts that 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 that, that God would would also think if He was human. Um, having your actions be blameless, having your attitudes be blameless. Um, it's not worship is not is not elaborate or weird. It doesn't have to be. It shouldn't be. Uh, Romans twelve one um, says. Um, pastors sometimes say things like seek after the Lord and. What does that mean? Romans 12, 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So, um, uh, it doesn't have to be elaborate or weird. Um, I know sometimes people... Whew, it's not like the whole marching around the church thing. I have seen some pretty weird things being in Pentecostal churches, but... Let me tell you, not all of it's from the Spirit, first off. And second off, um, it doesn't have to be like that. It really doesn't. Um, it doesn't have to be a certain routine either. So, um, It's a lifestyle. It's more than simply songs. It's verbalizing. Um, focuses your... Uh, I'm sorry. Um, it's, fo it's more than songs. Verbalizing focuses your attention. When you say things audibly, it helps you to focus, okay? Um, really no special grace or anything, but it just helps you to helps you focus. Like when you're getting off of drugs, um, you get up and shave every day. It's nothing to do with the beard causing you to do drugs, but it's the idea of responsibility that you start to ingrain in yourself. It's the exact same thing with worship. Saying things audibly will oftentimes help you to focus your, your heart and your mind. Worship starts in the heart um, and ends in the mouth. Starts here, ends there. So we try to go on Sundays and sing a song and try to get a feeling from that. That's where worship is a culmination of what's going on in the heart. Okay, um, giving is a form of worship. Tithes and offering that's a form of worship. To really worship God, we must submit to His will in our lives. Also, um, um, giving to orphans and those kinds of things that that's that is worship in our lives. To really worship God, we must submit to His will in our lives and His kingdom way of doing things. Ugh. His kingdom way of doing things. I don't know why my computer does this. Um, so, uh, let me read some, read a few things here. Matthew uh, 15. 
Matthew 15. And if you are a minister, be careful of how you are wording things. How often times do we just ramble off the bulletins and announcements and say things like, oh, it's over at so-and-so's house, but once again, I mentioned this in the church function lesson, um, but then you know we don't actually explain who that person is that's, that's having the party this week or who this person is who's having a birthday. Or, so maybe we just kind of assume people to know because it's, it's, well, this is our thing that we do. Be careful of routines. Be careful. Be careful of doing things that you have no idea why you do them, and they have no idea why you do them. The Lord's Supper. Are you, are you explaining where it comes from? Are you? Do they know where it comes from? Oh, we have the table that says, but did you explain to them? Okay. These people have some of these people have no background in the church, and that's those are the kind of people that we want to be witnessing to. If all we're doing is stealing people from other churches, we're not doing our job. You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teaching are, are merely human uh, rules. So I mean, you, it is possible to worship God without worshiping Him. So um, to not have your heart set on something. Um, so let's go over some definitions. Worship means to honor, to serve. Praise means to thank, to confess, to speak well of. Um, amen is is actually a, a Greek word. Um, so let it be um, is kind of a rough idea of it. Um, not the most accurate, but but it gives you a general idea of it. Um, hallelujah uh, is praise the Lord. You know, right? You never would have would have imagined that, right? Uh, Emmanuel means God with us. Um, Hosanna means save, we pray. It's it's it's, it's a cry for uh, to God to save. It's not really uh, doesn't really translate exactly over, but it's think of it as, as a cry for God to save. Um, uh, worthy uh, is is it means able to receive. Worthy is the Lamb. He's able to receive the glory, the honor. He, he's he's worthy. He's worth it. Um, uh, holy. This means pure, separated from sin or imperfection. Um, it, it's 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 a it's a it's a state of, of being. Okay, like for instance, Christ has made us holy. We are separated for the Lord. We're, we're we're separated for His purposes. We stand pure because Christ is pure, and we stand on His um, sacrifice. So I hope this is kind of making sense. Um, I'm just rambling these off pretty quickly. Um, if you get confused, just pause it and just read them back and forth and just think about it. Um, he touched me. This is something that, that actually means the Holy Spirit did a work within your within your spirit, within your your, your spiritual being, within your inside man. You know, not obviously not. See, there, there's another thing. It is people who don't grow up in the church, they don't get the idea between the flesh and the spirit. Um, so basically, there's either flesh, spirit, and soul, or, or flesh and spirit, which is the soul. It, there's different views on that, but. The, what you need to be concerned about are, are the two aspects there. The flesh is physically who you are as a person. Your intellect, um, your looks, these are the, this is what makes you a human person. Okay. Now, if the soul is different from the spirit, the soul would be something like um, you know uh, those things within you that make you um, maybe like um, learned behaviors and those kinds of things. Um, and it, but if it's not different from the spirit, it really doesn't matter. The spirit is 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 your inner person, your 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 character that can't be changed. Not something that you are by your environment, but something who you are inside. I know this is kind of, kind of confusing, um, but I'm sure if you if you really study the word and it, the Bible and maybe do some research online, the interweb, the world wide web, the www. Um, that you will be able to um, kind of reach a deeper understanding about this. Um, have your way. Um, I know this kind of sounds bad for those of you who may have, once again, talking about child molestation a lot um, recently. I wonder why that's been on my mind so much lately. Um, I think I read something in the newspaper. Anyways, have your way kind of sounds a little bit maybe perverted. I understand that. Um, what it means is basically let your kingdom come, let your will be done, let your way of thing and doing things be done in my life. And basically, it's saying I, I surrender of, of my will and I want your will to happen. Have your way, do your thing. Um, we, why do people raise their hands? It's it's to bless God and show dependence on Him. First um, um, Timothy two eight. Just some, just some different things um, about about uh, lifting up your hands. Now I do want to point something out. Um, 
First Timothy here, the passage that I'm about to read, is not necessarily saying that you have to lit, raise up your hands in worship. Um, it, is, it is a way you can. Okay? So. 1 Timothy 2.8 Therefore, I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. In Psalm 63, 3-4, it says, um, Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I'll praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. And then in 143, 6, it says, Um, I spread, mm, I spread out my hands to you. I thirst for you like a parched land. So, purpose and effects. We give glory and honor to the Lord. Obey His word. Focus thoughts and attention to Him. He makes Himself known. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Um, we 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 worship Him to give glory and honor to the Lord. To obey His word, because he, he tells us to, to, to do that, and to focus our thoughts and attention on Him. Okay, we do not worship for our own blessings or our own benefits. Um, he makes Himself known, and we also don't do it for our own sake. Okay, it is true that the Lord doesn't need us to worship Him, um, but still He does command us to do that. Um, so He makes Himself known um, through the worship. Um, as, as you're worshiping, it is definitely something that you encounter, and you encounter God in a new way. Psalm 22, uh, 1 through 5, sometimes the Lord will just uh, speak peace to you in your heart. Sometimes you'll get a new understanding of something. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises um, in our... Where did I want to go? And our ancestors, and you, our ancestors, put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. And you, they trusted and were not put to shame. So, uh, let's talk about prayer. Prayer is not for show, and it's also not meaningless. Oftentimes, we do one or the other. Um, it's meant to be a personal thing between you and God, com com uh, communication. And Matthew 6, 7 through 15 gives us a really nice um, model for how to pray and that attitude of, uh, of prayer. Um, it's called the, it's called the Lord's Prayer, but it actually technically should be called the Apostles or the Disciples' Prayer, I guess, because it's how they should pray. Matthew 6, um, 7 through 15. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. Don't just say words, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you, what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive... Um, actually, I think I want to stop there. No, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Sometimes we are not heard in prayer because of our heart. Sometimes we are not heard in prayer because of our heart. James 4, 1 through 3. And what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires of battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You cover but you cannot get um, what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, what you may, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Um, and then um, uh, 516b. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Um, and don't worry about it when when somebody says like the verse and then they say it A or B or whatever. Um, that's just a way of, of helping them distinguish which part of the verse they want to talk about or go through. Um, sometimes they don't want to read the whole verse. Um, so okay, prayer is communication with God. Um, no right or wrong way. It's not like this is the set way. You know that you have to recite the certain prayer. It's not like that at all. Um, in fact, it's debatable as to whether um, um, written prayers are, are a good thing or not. Um, they can be a good thing, but the problem is humanity tends to 
get focused on the task and not the idea behind the task. So it can be a bad thing too. John 14, 12 through 14. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Notice that in my name. That means you're acting as his emissary. You're acting it on his behalf, which means you can't simply ask for anything. Romans 8.26, you can ask for anything in his name, according to his character, according to his, his will, to his purpose. Romans 8. Um, basically pray as he would pray. Romans 8, 26-27. So we obviously see that prayer is not answered because we don't ask, because we ask with the wrong motives, uh, because it's not God's will. You know, there's, there's different reasons why prayers are not answered. But we're, not, we're not called necessarily to know those things, we're just called, called to pray. And as we pray, we do definitely change. God changes us before he changes the situation. Sometimes he doesn't change the situation. Remember that. Um, but he changes us. And so we're able to deal with the situation. Romans 8, 26 to 27, in the same way the Spirit helps us. You know, we're not called to have the perfect prayer. We're called to talk to the, to pray to the Lord. That's what we're called to do. Uh, Romans 8, 26 through 27 says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know uh, what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Um, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So, um, all right. According to uh, no writer, okay, okay. It's according to his character and will on his behalf. Um, be led by the Spirit in your prayer. In prayer, pray for biblical things. Uh, prayers are not answered because of first off pride. Um, once again, pride is lifting ourselves against the Lord. We'll talk about pride in the last lesson, which is the next lesson, authority. Um, it's because of lack of faith. You know, uh, pride can really show itself in a lot of different ways. And um, I'll just wait to talk about it until that next lesson. But um, a lack of faith sometimes. But watch out with this. We've mystified faith. Faith is not simply belief. Okay, or it's believing in things unseen. Well, and it's not just believing in things unseen. In context. It's believing about a certain unseen thing, namely Christ, okay, being our intercessor, Christ, uh, our salvation, even though we don't see our salvation around us. Those are the things he's talking about in context. He's not simply saying blindly believing things, okay? Um, and there is a, definitely a reason for our faith. See, the apostles had faith because they saw Jesus ascended. There was fact there. We take it on good, on good faith or whatever that they saw what they said that they saw. Um, and that you know that they reported it accurately, and so did the early church. They believed them for it too. Um, in fact, that was one of their big points: is that we're not, we weren't just making up tales. We saw it with our own eyes. Um, and and so, um, it's not. It's 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 what 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 I mean by I'm asking without faith. I mean, um, what am I trying to say? It's where you're not trusting God. You're you're saying words, but you're you're not going to answer. You know you don't you don't believe these. You don't believe in, in you don't trust in God when you're praying. Um, so, anyways, uh, unresolved conflicts. For for a real good idea on this, study James, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Just the idea, especially in chapter one, verse six, I think, where he says. Um, in fact, I have I have a translation of, of that right here. But when you ask, you ask, must ask in faith without hesitation or disputing with yourself. A, a good way of translating that. I got that from um, from a commentary. I forget which one. Um, the Expositor's Bible Commentary. The the new set. Um, so what is faith? It, it is more than belief. It is a trust in God. It's more, it's more than just a mindset, though. Um, it, is, it is a position before God that is always revealed with works. Um, unresolved conflicts. When we, when we don't resolve things, obviously, uh, we, we, we cause God doesn't listen to us. That goes hand-in-hand hand with pride. Um, but I already read that verse about it. If you don't forgive others, they won't forgive you. Or he won't forgive you. Um, not submitting to authority. Um, sometimes when we're living in rebellion um, and we expect God's blessings to follow, that doesn't work. For instance, if you are, let's say, for instance, a 16-year-old boy, for instance, and 
you are you are rebelling against your father, and then you're praying, and your prayers aren't being answered. God will literally ignore the prayers of the uh, unrighteous person. Now there are some some situations where where they will he, God will listen to your prayers. Um, I'm not saying that he always ignores them, but I'm saying um, as a Christian, um, the, this is a big cause of, of, of that. Um, selfish motives um, and desires. Um, if you're praying for something that, that's selfish, and especially the word of faith, watch out for word of faith people um, who say, you know, if you just name it and claim it, you can you can have it. Well, that's not necessarily what he's saying. In fact, that's not at all what he's saying. Um, apathy, asking but just not not really caring, just kind of like, uh, Lord, I pray that you would, you know, whatever. You see what I mean? It's, you're, you're, you're not actually mean what you're saying. You're just saying words. Um, and then also, I've obviously already said not asking. Um, some people say things like prayer works. Now, I do want to, want to point out this. It's not a magical formula. It's not a thing we must do and then check off. It's that, that God um, God hears. That That's that's the point here. Not prayer works, but God hears the prayer. Uh, Proverbs 15.29 uh, says, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. He's far from the wicked, but hears the prayers of the, of the righteous. So, um, obviously, I don't want to, I don't want to, I obviously want to point something out. He's not saying that you have to be righteous in order for God to hear you and make you righteous. That's never going to happen. You know, he's talking about the, the, the requests, the intercessions of the, of the wicked person. You know, so. Uh, pray through. What does this mean? Respond to life with prayer. A bad situation comes up, go to prayer. And don't just go for five minutes. Don't just go for a certain amount of time. Go and do what needs to be done. Seek after the Lord. Respond to decisions, problems, and needs with prayer. Seek the Lord in all things. Spend one to two hours to maintain. Uh, there was a pastor, what I, why I say that is, there was a pastor who once said, um, I, spent, I had to spend one hour a day to maintain two hours to grow. So there you go. Okay. So I thought I'd throw it in there. Uh, so, but it's not necessarily about the time, just as... as, as is the deed done? Um, listen, think, intercede, confess, worship. These are the things that we do in prayer. We listen. Sometimes we're not speaking. Sometimes we're just listening. So we thank God for the things that he's done. Uh, we intercede uh, for others. Uh, we confess our wrongdoing. We worship the Lord. Um, St. Kings um, 19, uh, 14 through 19. There's a king named Snacherib. And um, he gets a really bad report, and so so what he does is he goes to the Lord's temple and he prays before the Lord uh, for him to resolve it, and he does. So who do you pray to? In you know, in light of the whole Father, Son, and Spirit thing, people get really confused. You pray to God. There's only one God. Um, now about the whole, what is God's name? Um, it seems like his name is is Yahweh, but I do want to give a word of caution. The Jehovah's Witness claim that they're trying to restore his name, Jehovah. First off, Jehovah is, see, what happened is when God gave his name Yahweh, right, or Y-H-W-H, um, we don't really know because they, they kind of, there was no vowel systems and they just kind of did away with that word in a large majority out of respect to God. Um, and so then it translated into the Latin um, J-H-V-H um, and letters were just, ran, or vowels were randomly thrown in, Jehovah. It could be Jehivi, it could be whatever. See what I mean? It's, it, it, they were just randomly added um, so as to form the word. Um, Jehovah isn't even the original word, name that was given. It's through the Latin. So um, be careful about people who claim to have the answer of what the Lord's name is. Um, so uh, it's not about length, but it's about the heart. Go to prayer with the mindset, I'm in it for the long run. When you go down to prayer, don't say, I'm going to pray for this thing unless God an doesn't answer it, and then I'm just going to give up. Or I'm going to keep on praying for this thing, and then a week later you're going to stop praying for it. Go to the prayer, prayer with the mindset, I'm in it for the long run. I'm, I'm in this prayer for the long run. Not just in this personal prayer today, but throughout the course of my life. I'm in this for the long run. Continued perseverance. But also, don't just sit down for five seconds and pray and then get right back up. I mean, goodness sakes, have time to do something. Don't leave when you're done. Leave when you're done. Oh, I prayed five minutes. I'm tired of praying, so I'm going to go. No, no. No, don't leave until you're done. Don't stop seeking and seek earnestly. This is something that's a continual process. Um, go to mission, go to prayer on a mission, and make that mission successful. 
Uh, emotions don't dictate faith or truth. That's just a general principle. Emotions don't dictate faith or truth. Um, so, uh, fasting is a voluntary abstinence from food and things, which is combined with scripture and prayer. It's done for a specific reason at a specific time. Uh, we're not called to do it at all times. We're not called to, the prayer is to be at all times, but fasting is, is for specific times, specific reasons. Um, by definition, there's a lack of food and extra, um, I'm sorry, by definition is absence from food. Um, in, in the biblical world, that was a little bit bigger of a deal because you could actually die. There was no Walmart. Um, but um, and nowadays, I understand that, that there are other things that have equal amount of hold in our lives. I do understand that. Um, it's a lack, uh, the, uh, a lack of food and exercise causes spiritual focus. See, what happens when we don't eat, but then we exercise is our blood is going to our muscles. But if we don't exercise and we don't eat, it causes us to, to, to draw in more spiritually. It's going to be very difficult, especially once you say you're going to fast. All of a sudden, it's like you can't skip a single uh, chip. But trust me, you can. And you won't die. But also, seek medical counsel for before. Okay? Having a little bit of hunger pains is one thing, but remember um, that some people are unable to skip meals. Okay? Don't be stupid about this. Oh, the Lord laid it on my heart to... No, 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 no. The Lord gave you doctors that you should definitely listen to, okay? And you felt compassion to do this, and so you wanted to seek after the Lord. The Lord wanted you to seek after him, yes, absolutely. But he doesn't want you to do something stupid and harming yourself, see what I mean? Unless, oh, be very careful with this, unless like you're absolutely positive. But once again, be very careful with this. I know a lot of Christians say, oh, well, the Lord told me to stop taking my medication. Ugh. Uh, I wince every time I hear this. Like, uh, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Uh, anyways, this too will pass. Hunger pains are not forever. Uh, your flesh naturally fights for itself. This is something that naturally does. So when you start emphasizing your spirit, your flesh is going to be very upset. But remember, the same as you eat to, to sustain your flesh, you also need to eat to, eat to sustain your spirit. Okay, your spirit needs needs fasting, needs prayer, needs needs the word. Um, your study and prayer will become there we go. Will become clearer. When you fast, your study and prayer time will become clearer. Fasting doesn't excuse excuse you to live foolishly. Glorify God always. Okay? When sometimes when we're fasting we either justify ourselves or use it as an excuse or just all kinds of dumb stuff. It doesn't excuse you to live foolishly. Uh, fasting starts inside and moves out, not outside moving in. It's not a task. It's something that's from the heart, okay? It's not about the things that you do. It's not a mandatory obligation that you fulfill and then scratch off the list of good things. It's not that, okay? Um, fasting should be a lifestyle of moderation, prayer, and service. Um, turn a need into motivation for fasting. Discerning God's will, spiritual growth, having struggling with something. See what I mean? Turn it into, into a reason for that. Okay. Okay. Uh, fast for spiritual alertness, God's will, repentance for sin, the work of God, deliverance, to humble yourself as part of worship, or when in deep sorrow. Uh, turn uh, these different things that come up, fast for them. There's also a natural fast that, that, that people do. Um, the death of a loved one, for instance, people fast. Not necessarily seeking after the Lord, but just kind of withdrawing um, and, and giving their mind time to clear. Um, and this isn't bad. This this helps us to, to in the grieving process. Don't impress others uh, or to achieve selfish pur purposes. You go without so another can have. This is just general principles here. Give your food, time, and money, and self to others. When I say give yourself, I mean serve others. I don't mean like prostitution or anything. Um, when we seek the Lord, he responds. The Lord desires for us to earnestly and wholeheartedly seek him. Continually. This is something that just... Just, um, just uh, this is what God desires. Uh, think about those things that I've said, and then go back and pause, and, and just read over those points. Not much elaboration I can do, but uh, read over those while I read you some verses about fasting. Isaiah 58. Um, Isaiah 58, 1 through 12. Shout, um, shout it aloud. Do not hold back. 
Raise your voice like a trumpet, declare to my people their rebellion, and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right, and has not forsaken the commands of, it, of its God. They ask me for just decisions, and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting you do as you please, and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife, and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today, and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen, only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it, not, is it only for bowing uh, one's head like a reed, and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? See, God never once t uh, commands us that we must, um, that we must, uh... <coughs> Excuse me! Sorry, I was. Ooh. Let me re-say that. God, you know, does expect fasting, but He doesn't command it in the same way that He does other things. Like He says, pray continually. He says, be baptized as a sign of salvation. He says these things, but He doesn't say. Um, he doesn't say, hey, and fast every week, and because fasting should be should be from the heart. It should be something that you decide to do. Um, obviously, He wants us to fast and draws us closer to God, but it's not something that something that. Um, is a legalistic pattern, okay? Is this the kind of fast I've chosen only a day for people to know themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is what you call a fast a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your flesh and... Um, from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your, your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves, um, spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like noonday. Make sure that when you read um, the Old Testament, you don't just see, um, you know, oh, he's God's really getting them good. He's really yelling at them. Make sure that you don't see your own personal bias against the world um, in Scripture. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs. Remember, he wants everyone to be restored in a relationship, in a sun-scorched land, and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will, re will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up uh, the age-old foundations. You will be called reaper, repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Um, Matthew 6, 16-18. You know, and I'm just reading these verses very quickly. Um, go and read them yourself. Study them. Absolutely. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocr hypocrites do. Don't draw attention to yourself, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, see, because they're not doing it with their heart. It's okay if people know that you're praying, and it's okay if people know that you're fasting. What he's talking about is boasting about it. Uh, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. See? So, um, now let's see, go down to Jeremiah 29, 13. Um, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. When we seek the Lord, he responds. That is definitely a, a true thing, a true statement. He doesn't hide himself. And what we do is we seek for ten minutes, and then we say, you know what? God's just not going not gonna to hear me. Keep on seeking. When you're, when, you, when, you're, when you're done for today, go back again tomorrow. Or take a break and go back again the same day. But seeking is not simply asking for once. Okay? It's asking and keep on asking. Think about the parable with the with the with the evil judge who who the woman was asking for justice and he said no go away and she kept bothering him so he said fine fine just go away um, and he gave her a good ruling. How much more if we have a good judge God? See what I mean? So um, you know I put it like this at a class I taught. I was in the store and I saw this little kid um, 
asked for something, and his parents said, I'm not going to get you anything, so don't ask. But the kid asked anyways. And he said no. And so the kid asked again, and this went back and forth until finally the kid threw himself on the floor and was just making such a big mess. Hey, it was just, I mean, flailing and he's screaming and all kinds of nonsense. And finally the parent gave him the thing and just, just to get him to shut up. Unless we have that kind of perseverance, that kind of persistence in praying to the Lord, we will never receive the things that we ask for. You know what I mean? Obviously, they have to be according to God's will. They have to they have to be actually asked for. They can't be for own selfish motives, those kinds of things. But with that being said, um, we do need to persevere in asking. Um, Psalm, where am I at? Psalm 37, 25, I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children baking bread. Um, Luke 11, 5 through 13. I don't know if I'm going to read this. Um, then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, okay, this is another parable like the parable I just said. Someone asks for bread at night and the person says no, and they keep asking so they get the bread. Um, and then... Um, he tells them, if you know how to give good gifts to your kids, then how much more does your father know how to give good gifts to you? Your heavenly father know how to give good gifts to you. Um, Luke 18, 1 through 8, I believe, was a story I just told um, about the yeah the persistent widow with the with the unjust judge. Um, so, uh, I know I really blew through that. Um, a lot of this was just simple statements that I wrote out, so there was really no reason to um, um, kind of hang on them. Um, if you have any questions, post them below. I know I went really fast. I'll look up those passages that I said, uh, rewind the video, and pause them at certain points. I mean, uh, really a lot, of, a lot of stuff there. Next lesson is authority. This is the last lesson. There will probably be about three more videos, two for the authority and one for the closing. Um, so uh, I think that's it. Like I say, please ask questions. I know that I went fast. I talked kind of fast. I had a lot of things to say. I kind of blew through those PowerPoint slides. It's okay to rewind them. That's why I put them on YouTube. Um, and ask if you have any questions.